Hi guys, welcome back. So I'm really excited to announce this small mini course in Golang where we're building a full stack product with Golang in the back end and React JS in the front end. And um, it's a full uh, SaaS product because you can uh, actually take this and launch it on your own server and you can actually start making money off it. Uh, so we'll cover a lot of things. We'll cover login with Google. We'll cover logging in with, with GitHub, with Okta, with Microsoft. So all these four things. These two are again optional, but these two, uh, you know, uh, we'll cover in, in greater detail. So the concept basically of all the four is, is the same. So we'll be using OAuth for logging in. And uh, after I log in, I'll show you what this product actually does. So let's click on this and wait for it. So here we are on the dashboard. It has logged me in and here, what we can do is we can um, shorten our links. So let's say if I go to any random video on the on YouTube and I just uh, control C and control V here. And if I shorten it, it'll give me a shortened link. So right now, since it's on, uh, since it's on our local host, so it'll give us a link with local host. But if it was hosted on, let's say your own uh, domain name, uh, like URL shortener or something, it'll give you uh, that type of a link, right? So you can host it today and you can check it out. And you can copy to clipboard or you can show QR code and you can share this QR code with uh, other people as well. And you can also see the recent URLs that a user has, uh, you know, converted into short uh, URLs, right? So uh, th this is what we're building. So there's one small, uh, actually not small, but there's one thing that we're not going to be looking at. That's uh, the payment side of it in the sense we don't have uh, payments. Uh, but that's coming up in a new, uh, in another tutorial because I want to dedicate an entire series on how to work with Stripe. It's not as straightforward as people have you believe in the sense it's not as simple as just taking your uh, Stripe API key and putting it into, into your software. But there's so many more things with Stripe, right? You have to uh, look at subscriptions and customers and, uh, you know, you have to uh, see, look at uh, taxes and then webhooks. So all of those things people don't cover. So I want to cover that in a separate series. And this is why I don't have uh, payment in this. But uh, this has a lot of things that people are asking for like the people have asked me for uh, you know basic authentication and people have and many other people have asked me for full stack projects with golang and react so uh, this has both of them so it has react and golang which is a full stack project and it has a login with all of these different things and it is an actual working product in the sense you can launch it on your server and you can start making money off it again like i said i don't have uh, the the payment gateway covered but i will be covering it in, the, in uh, an upcoming series and then you can copy that code and put, paste it here and you'll be able to start uh, you know charging money as well right uh, so this uh, will last for about let's say about 10 15 videos of 10 minutes each it's not going to be very short right it's going to be 15 videos of 10 minutes each and we'll cover both react and golang now i'm assuming that you already know uh, basics of react as in i you can't expect me to teach react right i'm expecting that you already know react the basics of it and i'm expecting that you already know the basics of golang as well in the sense uh, i i probably might not go line by line on every single thing because uh, there are many other uh, videos on my channel which have uh, the basics of Golang, which cover things like slices and structs and all those things. I won't be uh, making you, ex uh, you know, understand what a struct is or what a slice is uh, when, when I'm, uh, you know, uh, building this project. This project is not for beginners, right? It's for intermediate developers. By intermediate developers, I mean people who have gone through the Golang tour, people who have who, who understand the basics of Golang and even with concurrency and who have probably built uh, a couple of web projects with Golang as well. So if you haven't built any web projects with Golang, then go to my YouTube channel. You'll find so many other tutorials like how to connect Golang with MySQL, how to build a simple Golang server. So all of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, projects are already there and how to, you know, build a lot of type, different types of scrapers. So do those, get your hands dirty with Golang. Uh, and only then come to this tutorial. I won't be explaining the basics when I'm building this project, okay? Uh, so I don't want any comments <laughs> saying that, hey, I didn't understand that, I didn't understand this uh, sentence, because I won't be explaining them. Like I said, it's for intermediate developers who already know the basics of Golang, already know the basics of React, all right? Uh, and this is specifically for people who have a problem with uh, log authentication, have a problem with uh, how to make uh, Golang work with React. So this is for those people only, right? Uh, so having said that, uh, let me start taking you through the uh, structure of the project and explaining to you. 
So along with the things that I said this project has, it has many more things. So for example, I said it has a front end and a back end. Uh, it's a completely full stack project and it has GitHub, Google, Microsoft, and Okta logins. But it also has the ability to store data with Redis and SQLite. So this will be quite interesting for you to see. And then it also has test files. So we'll write test files as well. So this is the first project where I'm introducing test files and that's because somebody left, left a comment recently that, hey, why don't you cover test files as well? So I said, all right, let me cover test files. I always thought that, that these can confuse people because uh, not many people uh, you know write code and then write test files as, as in, in many companies the uh, you know the approach is very different as in there's a, there's a separate tester who will always write even the unit tests right so the bigger companies work that way but there are, there are smaller companies that uh, you know get the developers to write the test cases themselves TDD it depends on what type of company you're from uh, maybe it's not dependent on the company size. Maybe it's dependent on how you know the approach of working. Whatever. In this project, we'll have test files as well, and uh, so we'll have three main folders: handlers, stores, and uh, utils. St utils will have our test files, and stores will have our uh, you know uh, files related to data storage. And handlers will have uh, our auth handlers, all right, and uh, and our um, route handlers as well. Then uh, in your front end, you have these four components about history, home, and visitors. Now, uh, working with React, with uh, Golang, there are two ways to do that. So one way is to embed uh, React inside Golang. Uh, that, that's a more server-side rendering kind of a approach where you can also work with Next.js and React.js, but embedded into Golang. Now, that's the approach that we're not going to take because um, that works well for blogs, and I will be covering that, by the way. So I will be having many tutorials coming up where we look at how we can embed React and uh, uh, Next.js inside uh, the, the Golang backend. Uh, we'll be building blogs and e-commerce platforms and all of that. Uh, but uh, I always somehow always like this approach where the front end itself is completely decoupled and separated because this can help you really scale up in production, right? And uh, at least that's that's at least what I think uh, from my experience. Maybe you have a different experience, but uh, I will be covering both, so you don't have to worry. I'll be covering both, but this is the one that I prefer, where the front end has a completely separate server, back end has a completely separate server. There's no server side rendering, all right. Uh, and this is what we'll, ha we'll have for this um, project because I feel that uh, this is uh, one project that you can simply take uh, from my GitHub account whenever I'm done with this. You can just take it and put it on your uh, server and you can start making money off it, right? So that's the kind of project this is. And this is why we have separate backend and frontend servers. And uh, you'll be able to, so you can just give them EC2 instances of their own and you can keep scaling them on AWS, you know, whatever. And uh, so, like I said, you know, these ha this has four different components, and here we have these different files. So this is the project structure, uh, more or less. I'll uh, so this is quite rough right now. I'll create uh, a better project structure in the sense where we look at how uh, we we'll create these files and the kind of type of functions. So if you've seen my previous videos, I also go into the exact function planning before I start coding. I I do the function planning of how the flow structure, the project structure is going to flow, the whole control structure or the, or the control of the entire program is going to flow with, from which all functions. So I'll be doing that as well in this uh, series. So. Um, this um, is good enough to get us started with the code at least. So uh, I hope uh, you have, uh, you're interested in this and do stay subscribed to the channel so that you come to know when I, when I uh, you know, start launching the coding videos as well for this. Uh, the thing is, it takes me a while to film those videos to create the content. So it, it will take a while for me to actually start putting those videos, you know, actually um, coding it and showing it to you. So uh, please be patient. It'll take at least a week for me to at least get started. So uh, do stay subscribed and um, uh, thanks a lot for watching.